All right, here's our second se section of notes from chapter 10. I'm just going to talk about the constructions of perpendicular bisector um, and making parallel and perpendicular lines given a line and a point. Um, our first construction is a perpendicular bisector of a segment given to us. Um, our first step is to open our compass more than half of the distance between WR. So we take our compass and just slide it open so it's more than half. So right there, I'm clearly more than halfway from W to R. And then we strike an arc using points W and R on both sides of segment WR. So what that means is putting the pointed end on W, you want to strike an arc above and below. And then we do the same thing from R. Put the point on R, strike above and below. Um, so whenever we find perpendicular segments, we're going to be drawing these arcs above and finding out where these points of intersection are. So we now have point A, we can call it. We'll call this one down here point B. The last thing we have to do is connect A and point B. And we will have constructed a perpendicular bisector. This kind of goes back to the first section of notes from the year where we had to find out how many points were equidistant from two points. It's all the points on this line. So we have to find those arcs that are going to be equidistant. So like this point, this point, these two points, and these two points are all equidistant. So they form a perpendicular line. And we know that each side is congruent to the other side because it is a bisector. So we can say that line AB is perpendicular bisector of segment WR. And as we go forward, you're going to see to get perpendicular lines, we have to do something with arcs like this. So if you are not quite finished, you can just pause. I'm going to move on because, um, again, this program only gives me 15 minutes to record. So as we slide down to construction number five, again, we're finding a perpendicular line. This time, it has to go through a point on the line. So it's not a perpendicular bisector, just a perpendicular line. So if we look at point C, we want to strike an arc on both sides of C on segment AP. So what we have to do is make sure that our compass is short enough where it's going to touch the segment between C and P. So I shorten mine up. I keep it this length. I'm going to draw an arc on the right side. I'm going to flip it around. I'm going to draw an arc on the left side. So I have two arcs. They're both the same distance from C. And we will call these two new points X and Y. Now, once we get to this point, we're going to treat this new segment between X and Y just like we treated this segment WR. We just have to bisect or find a perpendicular bisector of this segment, and it should go through C. So we're going to use X and Y, and we're going to strike an arc on one side of segment AP because we already have this point. We just have to find out where that other point is. So we're going to open our compass up a little bit wider. And then from Y, I'm going to come down here and draw an arc. 
And I'm going to do the same thing from X, keeping it the same length as I just did. And then these will cross at a point somewhere down here. Now that we already have C, and we have this point that we can call E, the last thing we have to do is connect C and E. It's just like above, we had to find like points A and B. Well, since we already have C, we just had to find one more point. So when I connect these, we have just constructed a line that's perpendicular to AP and it goes through C. So we can say line C, E is perpendicular to segment AP and it goes through C obviously. So similar to construction one, um, we just had to draw these two arcs first. I'm going to flip to the back side and we'll check out the other two constructions. Okay. Again, we're trying to form a perpendicular line and this time it's from a point that's not on the line. So C is below the line. Steps are pretty similar to our construction 5 and construction 4 from the front side. We will start by using C, we're going to strike an arc that intersects segment AP in two places. So we have to make sure it's long enough where it's going to touch AP, but not too long where it's way out here where it's not. So we're going to, we're going to keep it a decent length so it's going to touch AP in two spots. So we're going to draw almost a semicircle. It's not quite. It goes around and it crosses in two spots. One spot there, one spot here. Okay, and these are kind of our point of reference again. We're going to call these X and Y like we did in the last one. Because now that we have C, if we want a line to be perpendicular, it's going to be going through something like this. So we have to find out where that other point is going to be up here. So we use X and Y. We're going to strike an arc above here. So I'm going to set my compass to a length a little bit longer. Just open it up a little bit. And I'm going to draw an arc. And then I'm going to set it to the other side on point Y and draw an arc at the same length. And these arcs will cross in a point above here. And let's call that M. There we go. So just at the front side, we have these two arcs crossing. And now we take our straight edge and we connect C to M. We'll have this new perpendicular segment. So we can draw our box because we know it's perpendicular. And we will write down here that line MC. perpendicular to segment AP. This time C was off the line. All right. If you need more time to copy that down, go ahead. I'm just going to slide down. You can pause it. Our next construction takes a little more time. 
this time we have a parallel line. We're going to try to construct a parallel line to WR that goes through C. So we can picture that this line is going to be going something like this. And we're using our straight edge and our compass, we're going to find a way to construct that. So we're going to start by drawing a line through C that intersects line WR. So start by taking our straight edge. I'm just going to construct a line that goes through point C and intersects WR. Oops, and actually, I'm going to extend this a little longer just so I have room. Okay. I just want it nice and long because I might need that room up there when I do my construction. So now that we have this, like picture, picture your line coming through C this dashed line. Now that's not official, but if this these two lines are parallel, which we're going to make them eventually, what do you know about this angle up here and this angle right here? If we think back to first semester, those two angles are called corresponding, and if two lines are parallel, the corresponding angles are congruent. So what we have to do is, if we name this angle 3, if we can copy this angle up here, so it's congruent to angle three, so then we have corresponding angles that are congruent, then we know the two lines are parallel. So we will construct angle three at point C. So if you remember from our last recording from yesterday's notes, to construct an angle, we already have our one side. So we have our one side right here. Imagine we're going to use, draw this angle up above here. We have to draw an arc to start. So we put our pointed end on the vertex and we draw our arc. And we'll do the same thing up above. We're going to draw an arc. Okay. And on this arc, we have to find out where is this line going to cross? Is it going to cross up here, here, here? So then we have to open our compass up between these two points. So we open it up. So it's set to the width of angle 3. And then we come up here. We draw an arc. And this is where the other array for our angle is going to go. It's through this point. So we call this point M. And we connect C to M. We take our straight edge. We connect C to M. We know that this angle and this angle are congruent. And those are corresponding angles. So if corresponding angles are congruent, We know the two lines are parallel. So what we can say is line CM is parallel to line WR. And our reason would be corresponding angles congruent implies lines are parallel. And we use the construction from yesterday by copying an angle. Um, this was probably the trickiest one we've done so far. Um, hopefully this helps. And let me know if you have any other questions.